I'm starting a new series on the channel, How to Play the Queen's Gambit. Yep, I'm going to ride that wave of popularity. Me and Beth Harmon, very similar. So here we go, the Queen's Gambit. Well, it's an opening I absolutely love playing with both sides, but mainly with black. I really love the, the rich strategy involved in the opening. Uh, it's an opening that's been played by, well, leading players in the world, many world champions. Karpov, Kasparov, Spassky, Fischer played it as well. So that just is kind of evidence for its, its soundness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some of my favorite games with the opening and give you some tips on strategy and opening variations and yeah, what, what are the best lines to play. And I'm starting with just an outrageous attacking game. So playing white, Peter Heiner Nielsen and playing black, Veselin Georgiev. Now, many of you will know, know uh, Peter Heiner Nielsen as he is the second of Magnus Carlsen and a very strong player in his own right. So he was playing for Denmark here in the Olympiad. Um, the variation on the board is the Tartkova variation of the Queen's Gambit. So b6 is well motivated. This bishop is a problem piece, you could say, because it's blocked in by this pawn. However, once it reaches the long diagonal, then it's on a superb square. And this is a line that's, yeah, incredibly popular. What I'll do is I will give tips on the opening right at the end of the game. But what I want to do is go through this game in its entirety first. And here Nielsen played g4. This is absolutely outrageous. And before everyone says, oh, the influence of Alpha Zero, this game was played in 2008 when this kind of move wasn't even a twinkle in that in the components <laughs> of of a computer um i think the the player you could argue that popularized this kind of move the most in in the early 90s was alexei shirov anyway this is long after that played in 2008 um it's an outrageous move uh, very very rare in this particular position but in some ways well motivated because of course, white is trying to exploit the fact that this pawn is on h6, and with g5, white can open a file, and then the rook will follow, and white still has the option potentially to castle queenside. Well, black reacted by taking on c4. You know, they always say to meet a wing attack by action in the centre. This one didn't work out so well. And after this, actually, instead of playing g5, probably not the best, uh, Peter took on f6. And this is very powerful. Because after this, white is ready to spring open the position with g5. So the game went like this. Bishop b7 g5 sacking another pawn now the h and g files are open and now bishop takes c4 well that bishop moves just because basically you want to clear the h uh, the, the 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 back rank to to get the heavy pieces here and it's already extremely difficult basically yeah, white is going to swing the heavy pieces over to the king side. C5. Well, normally, as I said, countering in the middle is absolutely right. But here, white is fine. That, that shuts out that bishop for a moment. Bishop h6. The bishop at least tries to block the h file. And now king e2. So really simple. Basically making way for the queen to head for the king side. And here, again, black is doing his best to just stir up trouble in the middle. But this is root one. Rook takes bishop, giving up the exchange. And now the queen swings across <laughs> along the first rank. 
So the threat simply to take here, and it is game over, not to mention rook g1 as well. So therefore king h7, and now, again, didn't even bother moving that bishop. Let's just send the knight over. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. So there are now ideas such as this and this in combination with rook g1 as well. So, for example, if pawn takes bishop, then, in fact, this wins immediately. That just opens up the king even more. And now a check. And mate follows on the next turn. So it's really brutal stuff. So you can see these pieces just stuck on the queen side miles from anywhere. So that's the position on the board. Knight e4 just played. Rook g8. Fine. Black needs to bring the rook over. Here, yeah, bishop d3 is actually very strong, but queen h5, also a very good move. So that was threatening to take on f7. And bishop d3, again, it's quite a slow move, but actually that is winning. Um, but Peter went for knight g5 check, also pretty good. Rook takes and queen takes. And now a very subtle move, queen f4. So in this position, white is a whole rook down. That bishop can be taken. And yet that quiet move really leaves black in terrible trouble. Um, you know, my computer tells me that rook g6 is the best defense, but how one is supposed to... Um, find that in a game. And even then, white should have good winning chances. But anyway, in the game, that was taken, and now it's all over. If rook g6, we can take this and play that, and black has to give up the queen, and yeah, it's going to be mate. So after rook h1, bishop takes d5, queen h6, and now the queen drops on d8, and it's over, basically. And this is really nice. Basically, the heavy pieces come in for the kill. And now it is force mate. I quite like this because we we go around the houses a little bit. That was actually... This is, this is the final move of the game. Queen h4. Here, black resigned. If king g6, rook f6, mate. Well, fitting that the denouement comes on the king side where white started all the action. Now, just a fantastic attacking game, I have to say. Um, some really subtle moments. I, I love it when the queen just nudged back to f4 and black is in, still in massive trouble there. Let me go back to the opening and look at this. Uh, after b6, the most popular continuations are simply bishop d3 and castles. That's one very straightforward way for white to play, followed by queen e2 and rooks in the middle. Um, another way is bishop e2. This was played in a lot of the, the Karpov-Kasparov games in their matches in the 1980s. And then white exchanges on d4. And although he's given up the two bishops, the idea is to close off that bishop on b7. But, I mean, there are plenty of ways for, for black to play that. But I'm just saying that's actually the main line. As for g4, well... It's been tried a few times since, and it's not a disastrous move. Um, if this is taken, then white gets the pawn back on d5. That was actually played in the game between Grishuk and Leko, typical of Grishuk to play this line, and Grishuk actually managed to win that. Although, I think that's a reasonable way for black to play. You can, for example, do this and play queen d6. And, well, white's attack is actually pretty slow here. And in the meantime, black can counter in the middle of the board. So that's one decent way of playing. Another way, which I actually recommended on um, my chess-based DVD download, is knight e4. Just ignore that pawn on g4 and count it in the middle. It's also quite nice to exchange those bishops off because now the queen is quite free and it gives the rook options to come here 
Um, and that's actually been played in a few games and has been reasonably successful. So I think that's a, a better way for black to counter in the middle. So g4, well, give it a go. I mean, if you if you fancy trying this out, be my guest. I mean, this is great fun. However, I do feel that uh, black is abs should be absolutely fine after knight e4. But anyway, g4, great fun. Hope you enjoyed that game. And more coming soon in the king queen's gambit. Not the king's gambit. <laughs> That's something else. I'll talk about that another time. The Queen's Gambit this time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.